Greetings to the Spring community. Uh, my name is Mark Heckler. I'm a Spring developer advocate with Pivotal. And over the next few weeks, I hope to uh, come out with a few helpful, small, short, and easily consumable videos to kind of summarize some of the really key announcements coming out of Spring One Platform a couple of weeks ago uh, here in uh, Washington, DC. And I wanted to start with R2DBC, Reactive Relational Database Connectivity, which was a huge, huge announcement coming out of uh, Spring One Platform 2018. Um, for the last several uh, months slash years, uh, we've had the ability to uh, interact reactively with data stores all the way up and down throughout the stack using uh, Reactive Streams publishers, uh, which has been wonderful if you're using one of those reactive data stores, Redis, Couchbase, Cassandra, or MongoDB. Uh, but for those who have been working with primarily or extensively with relational databases, uh, that has been a, 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 a bit of a, a sticking point. Uh, there's been an excitement and an eagerness to work with uh, reactive with re relational databases uh, in a reactive manner. And until now, it's been very, um, well, it's been impossible to do so, right? Uh, so coming out of Spring One Platform uh, was an announcement of some work that has been being done and, and is continuing to progress and, and pick up a lot of speed and a lot of uh, excitement around that, which is R2DBC. Uh, you see that here, uh, the, the site is, uh, uh, the, well, the short link is r2dbc.io. Uh, so please do go and check that out. You can see that there are a few different uh, things here. And Ben Hale spoke about this at Spring One Platform. If you haven't seen the video, uh, we can link to that as well. But the uh, uh, SPI is there at the lower level to provide that interface with the databases. And then you have more humane clients, as Ben likes to say, uh, that will allow interactions or building upon uh, those, uh, those drivers so that you can... Uh, more humanely consume them in your business applications or your, your organization's apps. Uh, starting off with PostgreSQL, we have PostgreSQL in progress and H2. Uh, we also have some others that are coming online rather quickly, uh, but Postgres has kind of led the way. Uh, so that's kind of out in front with things. And uh, folks have asked, uh, understandably so, how to get started with this. How is the best way to get rolling uh, with R2DBC and, and to kick the tires? So that's what we're here to do, to do today. Uh, so let's uh, let's kind of get started. I'll do a very simple example, uh, but but it's a very very easy way to get uh, ramped up and and uh, started with R2DBC. So as most of our journeys do, it begins with the Spring Initializer. Uh, I'm just going to create a Maven project using Java, and I'm going to go on up to uh, 2.1.0. Milestone four of Spring Boot. I'm going to just change a couple of things here. Uh, we're going to create a coffee service because those of you who know me know that I'm all about the coffee, <laughs> right? Uh, I'm going to bring in the reactive web dependency, which brings in Webflux capabilities, Project Reactor, and Netty. Uh, and then I'm also going to bring in Lombok uh, because I'm a lazy developer. I admit it. I don't like to recreate uh, the wheel and do a bunch of boilerplate. Uh, so let's go ahead and save that out uh, to, let's see, we'll put that on our desktop. And I'm going to just save that down. Uh, we'll go out here to our desktop and open that up. And we'll load that in our IDE. I'm using IntelliJ. Feel free to use what works uh, for your workflow. And I'm going to go to the POM. We need to uh, make a few small changes here. Uh, the first thing I do want to point out is since I'm using a milestone release of boot, I also have access to our snapshot repositories and milestone repositories, and that's important. Uh, because our R2D, R2DBC um, uh, libraries are, are still in that, uh, that phase of things. So that's cool. That gets us uh, started the way we need uh, to be started. I'm also going to add in a couple of dependencies here. Uh, the first thing I need to do is add in my spring data uh, JDBC um, dependency. And that gets us some things that uh, I want to bring in. Let's see, 1.0.0. Uh, let's see if I remember this uh, correctly. R2DBC snapshot. That's what it is. There we go. And then I also need to bring in my dependency for R2DBC itself for the uh, Postgres. Postgres SQL. There we go. And we're going to pull in the latest uh, snapshot, and that sets us up, I think, rather nicely for what we need. So the next thing I'm going to do is just uh, get started writing our app. Uh, as with any app, uh, we start, or I like to start with my domain. So I'm going to uh, create a coffee class. 
very predictable, I know, but how can you, uh, how can you argue with coffee, right? Uh, so I'm going to create an ID for my coffee class, and then I'm going to also create a name. Uh, very simple. I'm going to annotate this field as non-null, uh, and that allows me to use Lombok to uh, uh, create this data class and also um, ask Lombok to provide me a required args constructor. Non-null indicates which args are required, uh, and that's a very simple domain, but that, uh, that gets us rolling. I'm also going to create or extend our reactive CRUD repository interface as defined uh, in Spring Data. So let's see, repository, repository extends reactive CRUD repository. Uh, we're going to be persisting objects of type coffee, of course, with an ID of type uh, long. Uh, and then because this is very early stages, right? We're kind of starting off and, and uh, off to a running start, admittedly, but we're starting off with uh, our repository re uh, support uh, for Postgres through R2DBC. But we need to provide uh, a um, way to delete all records that isn't quite uh, fully baked into the, uh, the repository interface at this point. So I'm going to uh, create a query that just says delete, delete, if I can spell that, delete from coffee. Sad, right? You're deleting coffees. Anyway, I'm going to return a mono of type coffee, uh, and we're going to do a delete all by ID. This isn't necessarily that important exactly how we uh, provide that in terms of convention, but uh, that's, this gets the job done. Now, I do need to provide a little bit of configuration uh, because, again, we're, we're starting off with this and uh, we don't have full repository capabilities uh, kind of brought in entirely at this point, but we have the capabilities to make the connections. Uh, so I'm going to uh, create a configuration class here. We'll call this class database database config and uh, let's create some beans right so I'm going to create a bean uh, we're going to start with a Postgres um, connection factory we need to probably start with that right uh, and I'm going to create a connection factory bean that returns a Postgres connection Postgres SQL connection factory so return new Postgres SQL connection factory and I need to use the Postgres SQL Connection uh, Configuration Builder. Yeah, that's, that's actually what we want to do. So uh, the next thing we need to do, actually, before we do that, is provide the host. And our host with the most, in this case, is localhost. I'm just running everything locally uh, from a local uh, Docker container. Uh, that gets us kind of, again, spun up and run, running quickly. Uh, my uh, database name is Postgres, and my username is also, cleverly enough, Postgres. Uh, and my password, as you know it must be, is caffeine. So, yeah, I think that, uh, that gets us what we need to, uh, to have there. So that gets us our, our first beam that we need. The next thing that we need to do is provide a database client here. So we're going to database client. Uh, we're going to create a uh, database client bean here. And actually, I do need to inject my connection factory. There we go. And we'll do a return database client. Uh, we're going to use, once again, a, a builder for this. I think that will simplify things dramatically. Connection factory. Uh, we will, uh, there we go. And let's just build that. And that gets us our second bean that we need at this point to kind of uh, get things rolling. And the next thing we need to, need to do is to create a, an R2DBC repository factory bean. DBC repository factory bean. There we go. So repository factory, we're going to inject our database client. And that's fine. So now uh, we need to create a context, right? A relational mapping context. Context. Say that three times fast. So we'll just call that context here. So relational mapping context. And that's enough to uh, get things rolling. Uh, we need to uh, set our uh, 
properties here just to kind of provide some defaults out of the gate and then we'll return a new r2dbc repository factory using our client as provided and our context and that gets us set up uh, now to provide the uh, where the the rubber meets the road if you will uh, to actually uh, to provide our coffee repository bean. Now we've, we've actually extended the interface below, as you saw, uh, and with Spring Boot's auto config, it will provide that dutifully for us. However, we want to provide a, a special repository bean that provides the, the R2DPC capabilities. Uh, so we're going to override that here uh, using our R2DPC repository factory. Uh, there we go. And we're going to return factory dot get repository for our coffee repository class. Wonderful. Okay, so this setup is something that, uh, again, it, it, uh, it's a little bit of uh, care and feeding required early on in the early stages here, but it certainly uh, it gives you the chance to kick the tires very early and to uh, see kind of where things are going. So uh, this, as you'll expect over time, will diminish and, and uh, disappear for the most part. Uh, but this allows us to uh, to get rolling and to, uh, to to actually get involved early in the process. So uh, at this point, we've got all the things that we need to bring everything together, but we don't have any data. We don't have any way to uh, see what's happening. So I like to just create a, a data loader class uh, where we can load some data into our um, database and so we can kind of see how everything uh, comes together and works. So I'm going to inject my coffee repository bean here. And now let's, um, uh, let's create a post construct method so we can um, get things rolling. So uh, yeah, so let's, let's load things. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is do a repository.delete all because that allows me to kind of clean up anything that I may have out there from before or if we restart this multiple times, it, it starts with a blank slate. Uh, so I'm going to uh, do my delete all, uh, call my delete all method, and then uh, chain the operations. As with all uh, reactive uh, uh, programming here, using a Project Reactor, you can uh, string operations together just as you would uh, with Java 8 streams. Uh, and, and this allows you, uh, because in an imperative world, you have your statements that you know will execute orderly, uh, in, uh, one by one so that you know after a statement completes, it will proceed, execution will proceed to the next one. But uh, in reactive programming, you don't know that necessarily the statement above is finished when the next one kicks off. So you need some way to signal that everything's clear upstream and that, uh, that the next operation can continue knowing that everything has completed upstream. Uh, of course, there are many ways to do this. Then many is one of, uh, one of the operations that uh, uh, suits this, fills this bill quite nicely. So it expects a publisher uh, once the delete all is finished, it expects a publisher to go ahead and proceed. Uh, so I'm going to provide that with a flux.just, and we're going to provide some coffee names. Uh, since uh, we're here in San Francisco this morning, I'm going to just plug in a few San Francisco coffee shops that you may walk by on a uh, pleasant stroll through the uh, city. Uh, so we have Pete's, of course, and I'm going to plug in Phil's Coffee. Uh, life is not complete without a stop at Phil's. And of course, a favorite uh, that you may know yourself, uh, may frequent yourself, which is Blue Bottle Coffee. There are many more, but this uh, gets us started for now. So I'm going to uh, map those, each of those coffee names, to a new coffee uh, object. And then I'm going to flat map each uh, the outputs of that, uh, output of that, uh, to uh, my repo to save it, to save each of those values. Now, I already here, I'm bringing this in because this is my, this is my publisher, right? A flux is a type of publisher. Uh, so we've got that in our then many, we're providing the publisher. I'm then going to go ahead and do another then many so I can, uh, again, chain operations. I'll do a repo.findall so we can get a, a listing of all coffees at our data store so we can verify that indeed this is uh, exactly what we have, is exactly what we think we have. Uh, and then I'm going to subscribe to kick things off. That terminal operator is, is, uh, is essential in a um, reactive um, uh, project reactor project, driven project, because it starts the process uh, with uh, cold publishers. And I don't want to go too, off, uh, too far off the beaten track here uh, because we can discuss the, uh, the just 
operator and things like that. But, but generally speaking, publishers are cold publishers. So nothing happens until a subscription takes place, until they have somebody subscribing, uh, which is good because a lot of resources aren't just tied up for no good reason uh, with a bunch of publishers doing work when no one's listening, right? So this gets us started. Uh, in this, we have, uh, hopefully we'll see that uh, we've deleted all of our records with a um, uh, reactive command through an RDBC, R2DBC um, uh, connection. And then we'll go ahead and add some records. We'll add some copies to our coffee store and then we'll print them out. We'll, we'll do a find all and print them out. So let's take a quick look. Oh, well, that's kind of important, right? Uh, we need to go ahead and uh, um, let's see, bring this in with a, oh yes. Um, so add that in and that gets us exactly what we need. Typos. And we have yet another typo here. So, oh, well, same typo. Ah, there we go. Okay, let's run this for real this time. And there we have it. So, so this uh, gives you a really quick look. We can see that we have our three copies. Uh, we can see that they're added to the data store. We've deleted everything, so we see nothing from before. We've added these, and we're reporting them back with a find all. Uh, so it's, uh, it's a little setup at this point, but it's, uh, it's very little setup. It just makes it uh, pretty painless, right? Uh, so you can get started very quickly and easily and um, without a lot of muss and fuss. So please do go check things out at, uh, at r2dbc.io and get involved. Uh, please, as Ben Hale is, is fond of pointing out, please don't use this in production yet. I think that should go without saying, but just to say it again, please don't. Uh, but do get involved. Start playing with it, kicking the tires, seeing what you think, and provide feedback. Provide pull requests. Uh, and thank you. Thanks for watching.